Hey, what's up guys? So we're gonna be showcasing off a really cool build of Monk today for season 19. This is gonna be a teleport tornado kick monk and it is quite fast now just as a heads up because it is an off meta build this won't be the best build for pushing the highest greater rifts although it is definitely capable of clearing out all content up to t16 with ease you could definitely push a lot higher than torment 16 aka higher than 75 in the greater rifts but it is not going to be the best build for monk in terms of being able to clear the highest content again just as a heads up because it is an off meta build so let's go ahead and now hop right into the build and explanation so first off it's it's going to be utilizing the Sun Wukosh set as well as utilizing a few uh, uniques that you guys might not have actually seen before, which is going to be the Scarbringer, the Gaina Nakashu, as well as the Revere Dancer. This is all going to increase the damage of our Lashing Tail Kick, as well as granting us that extra fireball uh, with that tornado that you guys are seeing. And then with Epiphany, we're going to be able to teleport towards our enemies and then just spam those tornado fireballs. It's really cool uh, to go ahead and just see all of the fireballs and tornadoes go in and just basically melt things very, very fast over here. So uh, basically, to sum up what the build will be doing is we're going to be stacking Sweeping Wind. That's what's going to give us our damage with the six piece sun wuko set you'll see over in the uh, bar that 13 you want to keep that up as much as possible sometimes when there isn't a density and you're not actually gaining extra stacks of sweeping wind what it will require you to do is just reactivate it it will cost spirit but you have to keep that up the whole time it's usually pretty easy especially in rhetoric because the density is just better but for the most part there are times where there is that gap and during that gap like right there i just activated it again and the reason why you want to activate it again is obviously to keep it up because that way you don't have to ramp it back up but you do have the ability to ramp it up quite fast because the attack speed with this build is very very fast with river dancers giving us 50 percent bonus attack speed to lashing tail kick but anyways let's go ahead and sum up the build really quick and then i'll go ahead and go over the pieces of gear and all the things that you want for this build to actually get it up and running so first off you're going to run the five pieces of sun Wuko. you will need specifically the legs the torso shoulders hands and neck the reason why you can't run the helmet is because you want to reserve that for the Gaina Na Kashu. And this over here on the primary will always roll with Lashing Tail Kick and you can get up to 100% bonus damage. Whereas if you put it in the cube, you will not get that. You will only get the secondary, which will increase the uh, damage of the Lashing Tail Kick Fireball that will deal 1400% weapon damage. So keep that in mind that you have to have this as the helm slot. Uh, but yeah, you're going to require all of the uh, pieces of Sun Wuko except for the helmet. Then we're also running the Captain set to give us extra resource cost reduction because this build is very, very hungry for resource. So we're going to be running the two-piece Captains and because we are obviously running the five-piece of Sun Wuko that requires us to run the Royal Ring of Grandeur. That's going to give us the bonus for the Captain set as well as the Sun Wuko set. And then we're also running Unity and then uh, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. Any combination of the Royal Ring of Grandeur, the Unity Ring, the Obsidian Ring, the Zodiac, and the Convention of Elements is going to be ideal for this build. Again, you can kind of put one or the other in the queue, but it doesn't really matter where you queue the certain uh, ring, because they're all going to be rolling with that legendary power, and there's just a flat number, except for Convention of Elements, which in the cube, usually it is better because you will get that bonus 200% every single time it's inside of your cube. But for our weapons, we are running the Vengeful Wind over here. So that's going to increase the stack size of Sweeping Wind. That's giving us all the damage with the six piece of the Sun Wuko. We're getting 1500% bonus damage for each stack of Sweeping Wind that we have. And this is going to increase it by 10. Normally, it's going to be three. And then we're running the Scarbringer, which is going to increase the damage of Lashing Tail Kick. And then uh, something else that we're running is Reaper's Wrap. Um, this is going to give us extra resource because even though I'm running the Epiphany Desert Shroud to actually give us extra resource and a lot of the stuff just comes down to rolling resource, it is a very hungry uh, build for resource. So uh, Reaper's Wraps can be great here. You can alternatively, if you want to, go ahead and run another set of bracers. Feel free to go ahead and do so. And then for the cube, we're running Measure Schmitz. This allows us to keep up our Epiphany throughout the entirety of the the uh, duration because Desert Shroud is going to give us an extra 50% uh, damage reduction. Uh, and then we have River of Dancers. That's going to go ahead and increase the damage of Lashing Tail Kick and make it attack faster than Zodiac Ring or Unity or Royal Ring Ranger or Convention of Elements. Any combination in the ring slot over here for the uh, uh, jewelry. And then uh, as far as what we're running, we're running um, 
Epiphany Desert Shroud, we're running Lashing Tail Kick, the Spinning Flame Kick, that's what gives us our Tornado, so we can go ahead and throw out that Tornado and that Fireball with the uh, Gynet Nakashu and deal massive amounts of damage. Then we're running Sweeping Wind Inner Storm, that just increases our Spirit Generation. Then Mantra of Salvation, uh, we're running Agility. You can also technically run Circular Breathing if you meet the thresholds for the survivability to give you additional Spirit Generation, but I'm running Agility for survivability, give us extra dodge chance. And then we are running Mystic Ally, Air Ally, that gives us extra uh, Spirit Regeneration. And on top of that, we can activate it because we have a lot of cooldown with our Measure Schmitz as well as our Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. So we're able to go ahead and spam that quite often. Then we're running Dashing Strike, Blinding Speed, that's gonna give us additional dodge chance. And then for our passes, we're running uh, Resonance, that's gonna give us extra Spirit Regeneration. Exalted Soul, again, extra Spirit, uh, Regeneration and then Guardian's Path that's going to give us extra Spirit Regeneration as well as 35% chance to dodge incoming attacks. And then we're running Seized Initiative to attack even faster. You'll see this build attacks super, super fast. And while we're attacking fast, that proxy a Zodiac, and that's going to again let us uh, pop Epiphany and the uh, Mystic Ally much more often. So, what you're really looking for is pretty much standard in every Diablo build, with the exception of getting a uh, resource cost reduction instead of cooldown reduction, uh, because you're going to be relying off of Measure Schmitz to go ahead and apply the uh, resource. Um, well, uh, Desert Shroud essentially, or Epiphany is going to apply that extra spirit uh, generation over here. And then as far as the gems go, uh, the legendary gems, we're looking at the Sun Wuko uh, amulet over here with the Gogok of Swiftness inside of it, and that's just going to give us extra cooldown, but it's really just for the attack speed and the dodge. You can honestly run something else if you wanted to. The only important one, I would say, is going to be the Royal Ring of Grandeur. Uh, with the, you can see that there's the Bane of Trapped inside of it. That's the only one that I will really recommend because you're going to be teleporting towards your enemies. You're always going to be able to proc that uh, legendary ability where you're going to reduce the movement speed and get that bonus damage. Honestly, this is the only one that I would say is like really required. The rest are kind of up to you. I just like the Gohan of Swiftness for extra attack speed that's going to be proccing everything. And then on top of that, you get extra dodge. And then for the video, I was running uh, the Bane of the Powerful. Uh, but again, the only one that would be important here, you guys can make some suggestions in the comment section below. Um, I was just leveling it up because I wanted to go ahead and augment gear. By the way, this build has no augment, so you can definitely push much higher with this build. And it wasn't like perfected. I didn't have everything best in slot with the right rolls here. But it easily clears T16, which is kind of the goal with these off-meta builds. Uh, but as far as what you're looking for on your most of your pieces of gear, you're just looking for that crit chance. I'll leave the D3 planner down below, but resource cost reduction where you can get it, which are going to be in your shoulders. Uh, on the helm, you'll always roll that additional lashing tail kick, but in the boots, you also want the lashing tail kick as one of the other stats on it. Um, and then again, resource cost reduction would be great to go ahead and have as well. And then uh, crit chance, uh, well, with Unity will always roll with uh, crit chance and then elite damage, which is great to have as well. And then Road Ring of Grandeur is kind of hard to roll, but you'll always have the attack speed rolled on it as well. But uh, pretty much just dexterity, and vitality, uh, and then all resist where you can get it, like on your boots, or if you can get it on your chest piece, or elite damage reduction, that would be ideal. Then you're really looking for the fire uh, bonus damage on Reaper's Wrath, and then crit chance. And there's nothing, again, specifically that is really special to mention, other than reduce resource costs if you can get it. Um, I'll... Uh, Alternatively, on your gloves, you can roll off Dexterity and go ahead and actually happen to have, uh, if you have enough Paragon points to go ahead and roll that to like attack speed or uh, anything. You could even get cooldown reduction. It's totally viable because with the Captain set, you do get bonus damage uh, with the three-piece bonus, so keep that in mind as well. But uh, again, I'll leave the D3 planner there for anyone that wants to fully read everything, but I'll mouse over the pieces of gear. Uh, this one actually should have Vitality and all resist on it. I guess that's just an insane save, but I'll leave it down below and I'll update it so you guys, when you guys click it, it'll be totally fine. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed seeing something off meta and something kind of cool to play because I have not seen anyone utilize uh, Lashing Tail Kick in quite some time and I think it is a pretty cool build uh, to go ahead and run. And for the video, we were uh, like almost Paragon 1000. So uh, we didn't, again, ha nothing was augmented for the build, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing something new and a little bit different here. And if you guys are new to the channel and would like to see more off meta Diablo builds, I know one of you guys requested this build and I was actually making it anyways. Um, but if you guys have any requests for other off-meta Diablo builds. Um, I will make sure it's at least T16 viable and they should be able to complete the rift in anywhere from I would say at least uh, maximum five minutes. They have to be able to complete it with a relatively fast speed otherwise I don't think it's going to be viable for anyone to run. But if you guys would like to see any other off-meta builds make 
viable, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to go ahead and get those up and running. But anyways, thanks for tuning guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did drop a like on it. And if you are new here, would like to see more Diablo off meta builds as well as other action RPG games, as well as other gaming content, hit subscribe, turn on the bell and you'll see more very soon. But thanks for tuning guys. Have a good one and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one. I'm signing out. Peace.